The process component is probably one of the more popular and what some people will say is possibly one of the most useful components out there. Of course, there are several of them and I'm going to show you the difference between them. So we're sitting here under the process component and one of the things that's important is remember that each governance and management objective relates to one process. Now there are 40 processes in the COVID core and each process is supported by practices and activities. A process describes an organized set of practices and activities to achieve certain objectives and produce a set of outputs that support achievement of overall IT-related goals. You've seen this before in some of the other COVID courses. These are the governance and management objectives. Remember, we had five domains. Up top, you see EDM, or Evaluate, Direct, and Monitor. There are five objectives, and those are called governance objectives there. Below that, we have our management domains, APO. There are 14 objectives here, and these are management objectives. We have build, acquire, and implement. We have 11 objectives there, and those are management objectives. Deliver service and support, six objectives. And finally, MEA with four objectives. Each governance and management objective includes several process practices. Each practice has one or more activities. There are a limited number of example metrics that accompany each of those practices to measure the achievement of the practice and its contribution to the achievement of the overall objective. A capability level is assigned to all process activities. A process reaches a certain capability level as soon as all activities of that level are performed successfully. And as you might know, COVID supports a CMMI-based process capability scheme which ranges from 0 to 5. Now, where relevant references to other standards and guidance are included in this section as well, the related guidance refers to all standards, frameworks, compliance requirements, and other guidance that are relevant for the process that we're looking at. The detailed reference area cites specific chapters or sections within that related guidance. And finally, although the goals cascade relationships are at the governance and management objective level, if you're looking at each of these from the process component, you can use the goals cascade information to determine your most valuable processes based on their relationship to alignment goals and enterprise goals. Now let's take a quick look at one of the governance and management objectives from the process component view so you can see what I'm talking about here. We'll pick DSS05, which is Managed Security Services. This information is coming from the COBIT Governance and Management Objectives publication and I'll do a complete end-to-end -end view of all these components from this guide in Module 9, where I do the COVID demonstration on components. So you see, this is an example of DSS-05 from the process component level. What I want you to notice up here, it gives us information about the practices, where you see DSS-05.01, that is the first practice of this process. Now, there are seven management practices here. As mentioned before, we have example metrics here, and here are our supporting activities. Notice to the right of each one of those activities is that suggested capability level we mentioned earlier. And at the bottom of this practice, you see related guidance. Here we have related guidance such as CMMI, high trust, and so on, with its detailed references over to the right. Okay, that was a quick view of the process component. Of course, we'll go through this entire piece end-to-end -end on how COBIT illustrates this in the guides. But next, let's go take a look at organizational structures.